EMDR is very special mm -hmm. and it stands for eye movement, right. desensitization, and reprocessing. Whenever we're traumatized, it gets locked in our brain. I mean, physically with the images and the sounds and the thoughts and the smells. And if our brains don't process through it, it literally gets stuck. And it can cause you to stay home for years, right? Because you have so much anxiety. What the eye movement tends to do, or the bilateral stimulation, because sometimes you can do this, sometimes people do tapping. Mm -hmm. um, it just helps you reprocess it. But from an adult perspective, rather than something that you process as a child or something that happened um, many years ago. And now you're so competent and so experienced, it's important to take your good mother and mother that part of you that was wounded. Wow. Does that make sense? Yes. And what, what I've seen with EMDR because I've done scans before and after. Mm -hmm. It takes that overactivity and it settles it down. Yes. So why don't we start mm -hmm. with the thought of being embarrassed and the health issues. Mm -hmm. And you can't screw this up. Mm -hmm. Let's just be really clear. Okay. All I want you to do mm -hmm. is follow my fingers. Okay. Think about what we talk about. Mm -hmm. Imagine yourself on a train and let's just see where your brain goes. Sometimes it'll go to the past, to other events. Just want to see what's linked okay. to it. And so remember on a scale of zero to 10, you said, this is upsetting. Uh, an eight, like if I travel, I'm going to die, I'm going to be embarrassed. Um, Let's just see where it goes. Okay. Ready? Yep. So all I want you to do is follow my finger. Okay. Take a breath. Tell me what comes up. Getting on a train. with someone besides like my comfort is what I was doing. And it just, it just makes me feel jitter. And the feeling of my brain going, please don't let that happen. Please don't let that happen. You know, like that's, that's just how I feel when I start thinking about even the possibility of doing that. Who are you saying that to? Myself. <laughs> okay, so I want you to just imagine the thought, mm -hmm. getting on, feeling jittery. Mm -hmm. And let's see, let's see where that goes. Let's okay. see what that's linked to. Okay, take a breath. Where did you bring go? To our bus. To where? To our, to bus. our bus. Tell me. Being sick on the bus and then having the kids and the duh and like, Maybe it's a lot of it too, is like, I always keep everything together. And if I'm not okay, I don't feel like that's what it is now, but maybe before I do feel like I'm the only one in control at all at this moment. And if I lose control, it is not good. So let's go back to the train or go back to traveling, feeling jittery, mm -hmm. feeling, oh my God, I'm gonna be embarrassed. Mm -hmm. And let's let's see where that goes now. Okay. Okay. Take a breath. Where'd your mind go? It just felt the same, really. Just me and Molly sitting on a train. Anything in that? No. Feeling anxious, feeling jittery. Feeling pretty calm, but yeah, just Molly and me. 
Well, let's have Miley not be on the train this time and have you be with whoever else you want to be and see what happens. Okay, take a breath. Really, it's just me sitting on the train and me sitting there going, how am I feeling? <laughs> am I? <laughs> right now I'm feeling very calm, which is good. But mostly just me thinking, am I, am I gonna be okay? And I do know I'm highly functioning that's why I think now doing the work that I've done because really, I really can't believe the change in my life from January till now. And like I said, in, in January, February, there's no way I would have believed I would have been sitting here highly functioning. I have my moments, but I'm well, functioning. and a lot of the moments go back to, am I going to be sick? Totally. So let's work on that. That is that is what it is. And before your dad got sick, did you have any health anxiety? No. So let's, no. let's go back to that time. And because the, the idea is you're not going to be okay. What if I get sick? I'm going to die and there won't be somebody to help me. So let's start at that thought. Okay, take a breath. What came up? Mostly on that, it was just seeing my dad and things that he went through like little flashes of everything my dad went through that was so well and most of the time once again like I had to be there because at that point my mom also had had a horrible thing happen where an artery broke in her nose have you ever heard of that it was so crazy and so we were in Baltimore at Johns Hopkins, because that's where my dad was. Once he had his voice box removed, that's where he had it done. And we were at the hotel there. Uh, this is the most horrific thing I think I've ever had to deal with. And I'm young. I was, I guess, 17 or 18, going on 18. And all of a sudden, my mom yells for me to come in the bathroom, and we're in this place that you would stay at Johns Hopkins and I ran in and literally I'm not even kidding you the entire sink was filling up with blood so quick because it was like just every time her heart it was like gushing so I called 911 they came and got us and took us to the emergency room and which my dad was in the hospital just had his box voice box removed and my mom is now in the hospital with this happening and she literally had to sleep setting up for six weeks because they put this thing called a balloon in her nose to stop the bleeding. So once we got flew back to, to Kentucky, where I'm from, I just remember having to really take care of my dad because my mom literally is on the couch sleeping straight up for six weeks trying to not, and I'm an only child, you know, like it was me, so my mom and dad. So completely overwhelmed. I remember the time my dad got a shot and we were walking into, and again, he couldn't talk and he had one of the tracheotomy things in and we were walking into their business because my dad was such a, I'm still going to work kind of guy. And he had gotten this shot and I don't know what had happened, but I look and like the whole back of his pants were just, it was just blood. And we're going like, dad, like, come on, dad, like, and then putting him back in the car because my mom's sick to take him. So, yeah, when I think about it, there's a lot of health stuff with my dad that I saw at, like, such a young age. It was scary. So take your adult self now. Mm -hmm. And what would you say? You're 17 now? Yeah. What would you say to your 17-year-old self? 
like what an amazing daughter first of all you were to be able to do that and like i'm sorry you had to go through that alone because i really did like we had no other family it was me my mom and dad and that's it so i want you to get on the train with her with the 17 year old but also from the perspective of your good mother who has seen spirits What came up? <laughs> Just that what I would say to her is also like you saw so much. And actually a lot of that was going back and forth to Baltimore from Kentucky. Traveling. Because other things happened there too. Um I think it's kind of me saying to myself, the things that Molly has said to me is like, I think also sometimes I'm like, my life has been so awesome. And so like, I feel so fortunate and blessed for the life that, especially that I'm leading now. And I also, I say a lot of time is like, why me? Why did I get to live? But actually looking back on it, I realized like I've actually been through freaking a lot. I mean, it's like, I didn't know about the details of that yeah, stuff. It was horrible. I mean, that's a nightmare. It was terrible. Like, and I just you was, survived. I was that's, thinking coming back from Baltimore, my mom couldn't drive because she had a balloon in her nose. I guess I could have, but I guess my dad was adamant, even though he had just had all this, like he was driving. And I just remember him putting the car supposed to be in reverse and he had it in drive and like went over this little like parking curb and he was so upset about it. And I just remember being sad that he was embarrassed that he did that and because he was so embarrassed. And I'm sure I don't even remember what happened after that. I just remember I was really sad that my dad was so embarrassed. And that he was so sick. And my dad was like, like he took care of me and my mom. Like he was amazing. Best dad ever. And I think maybe that was a lot how I feel is like he probably was feeling like he wasn't in control anymore. And I know that made him so sad and embarrassed too. Because he really did take care of my mom and me. He was awesome. And... I guess after that, I'll never forget when my dad died, that it was just me and my mom sitting there. And it was like kind of just like the two of us, which was pretty scary too, you know? Pretty scary because he'd always taken care of you? Or? Yeah, and it was like, we were like, you know, it was me, my mom and dad, and we were so close. And then I think like my mom, like to this, I mean, she wore a wedding ring until she passed away, you know, another 30 years, she would have never, like, they just had this most incredible, special thing. I feel a more compassion for your younger self. A lot. And despite all of that, it's been fine. Yeah. Yeah, it really has. And then... So if we think of traveling and the anxiety, you're someone that can deal with the nightmare and come out okay. That's where I got to get to my brain to know that I can. I'll be fine. Let's do that. I'll be, okay. I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what, I'll be fine. What came up? What came up? Really just on the train with my AirPods in, just seeing myself being okay. There's this great story I read of a grandfather who told his grandson that there's a war going on in his head between two wolves. 
that like really bad, evil, hateful, scary, awful wolf, and a really fun, loving, peaceful wolf. And the grandson says, which wolf is going to win? And the grandfather said, the wolf you feed will win. Good. But you've been feeding yeah. the scary wolf. Absolutely. You've been giving that wolf treats. Major treats for a long time. Right? And what does it say in the Bible? Philippians 4 8. Think on whatever is pure, right, lovely, good, excellent, worthy of praise. Let your mind dwell. And Romans 12 2, I just love so much. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. People know that first, but they don't know the second part of that first, which is then you'll be able to test if it's God's good, perfect, and pleasing will. And these anxiety thoughts are not God's no. good, perfect, and pleasing will. No. Because he talks about the lilies of the field and how they don't worry. Yes. God came, Jesus came to give you abundant life. Yeah, no, not and plans to destroy had, you, but plans a, to make you. <laughs> and you have had an abundant life. Yes. And you are so blessed. So and, blessed. And that's where we have to feed that part of your mind. Yes. Right? Absolutely. Was this helpful? So helpful. It always is. Mm -hmm.